uh, Karen was going to pray for us here, if you would, please. Okay. I'll give you a second. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to hear your word today. Please send your Holy Spirit on Pastor Paul so that we may speak your words of love, forgiveness, and life. Send your Spirit also on us who hear that we may more fully comprehend your love for us, expressed in the death and resurrection of Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, last week our message title was, This Is Your Station, and we talked about how, how we need to humble ourselves. We need to, God calls us to humble ourselves, uh, uh, contrasting James and John when they asked Jesus to share in his glory, God and Jesus both call us to humble ourselves. Jesus humbled himself to come to the earth, to become human humbling himself to serve us, but most especially to serve us by death on a cross. Your task for the week last week was a scary one. Ask God to give you humility. Sometimes we need to be careful what we ask God for because he might just give it to us. But I encourage you to ask God to give you humility. And the question for the week, are you satisfied with your station in life? Do you keep reaching for more? Are you unsatisfied with what God has given you? Or, or do you recognize that he has placed you right where you are for a very specific purpose? Did anyone have any thoughts or comments on that over the last week? Okay. Then we are going to forge right ahead. Our message title for today is A Whole New Level of Preparedness. And we prepare for a lot of things these days. Some of you may be preparing for next Easter's uh, uh, dinner, having people over. Uh, we prepare for emergencies. We, if you go to the doctor's office, they have you fill out all these forms just in case something happens. They are prepared to call someone. Our schools, unfortunately, these days have lockdown drills so that they can be prepared for uh, a worst-case kind of scenario. We talked a couple of weeks ago about uh, the, the temple and the, the tabernacle, that there was preparation for both of those. But what does the word prepare even mean? It actually comes from the Latin, which literally means to make ready before. And that makes sense, right? To make ready before. But if you're like me, if, you, if your brain works like my brain, and if it does, I apologize. I feel so sorry for you. But if you're like me, if you look at prepare, then you begin to wonder, well, is there such a thing as post pair? And so I looked it up, and there are people on the Internet who believe that post pair should be a, a, an actual word that we have in our English language, to make ready after the fact. But it really isn't possible, right? It's, it's that old saying, uh, it's like closing the bar, uh, barn door after the horse has left, okay? We can't fix something after the fact. But there are occasions in our lives that we wish that we could post pair. And there are uh, examples in the Bible that, that people, if they had known, they would have prepared and they wish perhaps they could post pair. One example of that is in uh, Luke chapter 14, Jesus is talking. For which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Not being not able to finish is a problem. And it makes us look bad and it, it makes us feel bad. And there are times that we want, that we wish we could go back and redo things. Preparation is important for humans, and it's actually important for God as well. God prepares. He prepares us. One of the things with Palm Sunday that we're, that we're talking about is, 
is that voice crying in the wilderness in Isaiah chapter 40. A voice cries, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. This is John the Baptist who is saying, prepare the way. You've got to be out there and and prepare the way. And this is at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. John baptizes him in Jesus, and, and then Jesus begins his ministry. But there's also preparation that needs to be done at the end of Jesus' ministry with Palm Sunday. Jesus sends uh, disciples out, and and there's this preparation. The the people are preparing for a king. They don't understand that Jesus is a different kind of king than what we were thinking of, or they they were thinking of, but they know that a king is coming. And, And our hosannas that we sing... Those words were almost um, uh, identical to the words in Psalm 118 from our first reading. Save us, which is Hosanna in Hebrew. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. This prophecy of a king entering Jerusalem, this was, this was long foretold. Jesus knew it was coming, and that's why he, he sent the two disciples into Jerusalem to grab the colt, as we read in Mark chapter 11. Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Olives Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. Now, these two disciples that Jesus sent, Jesus understood what was going to happen, but these two disciples, they were not prepared. None of the disciples could have been prepared for this entry into Jerusalem. They were not ready for all of Jerusalem to come out and recognize that Jesus was the long-awaited Messiah. They couldn't have been prepared for that. But there were other things that were going to happen that next week that they were also not prepared for. Two days before Jesus was crucified, on that Wednesday, Jesus and his disciples are, are at the house of Simon the leper. Now, let's just pause here for a moment regarding Simon the leper. Simon obviously had leprosy at some point, but we have to assume that he was healed. Lepers in that day would have been uh, outcast. They would have been shunned. They would have been restricted from associating with people. So we, we have to assume that, that Simon had been healed, and presumably, possibly, by Jesus. And maybe that's why Simon uh, asked him into his home. But I feel kind of bad for Simon. Simon to get stuck for all eternity with this labor, label, Simon the leper. It reminds me uh, of a, a childhood friend I had uh, from grade school. Uh, we went to high school together, and then we actually went to college together, and his name was Dan. And when we got to college, uh, there were several other Dans there in, in college. And so this friend of mine, Dan, became Fat Dan. And not because, he was, not because he was overweight, in fact, he was in very good shape, um, but because he could stick out his belly, and, and so he became Fat Dan. So 40 years later, when I think of Dan, I think of Fat Dan. I wonder if there are labels that we carry. Maybe put on you by others. Maybe self-inflicted, labels that we hold on to. We'll talk about that more a little bit later. But let's go back to Simon and his house. There was something that was about to happen in Simon's house that nobody but Jesus and one other person knew about, and that was a woman who was going to anoint Jesus with pure nard. It's in, our, in our text there, it says that, that she, uh, the, this, bot, this alabaster flask of pure nard was about 300 denarii, 
were of, of value. And 300 denarii is almost a year's wages for a common worker. Okay, so this was, this was an expensive thing. And if you hang out with someone by the name of Simon the leper, you're probably not in the upper le- echelons of, of society. So we can a- a- believe or assume that, that she didn't have a lot of money probably. And she took this, this bottle of pure nard, and it's not like she grabbed the cheap stuff in the Walmart thing, okay? This bottle was a sealed bottle. It didn't have any screw top to it. To use the nard, you had to break it. It was a one-use kind of event. And she intended to pour the entire thing over Jesus' head. She was prepared. She must have either been, been saving up to purchase this bottle of nard or perhaps it was so valuable that it was something that had been passed down from generation to generation. And she was prepared at this moment to pour it over Jesus' head. Let me catch up to where I'm at here. In Mark chapter 14 from our gospel. But Jesus said, leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you. And whenever you want, you can do good for them but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. This woman was preparing Jesus for his burial. She she couldn't have known the the events that were going to happen in the next few days. She wasn't prepared for that, but she was prepared to prepare Jesus and his body for burial. She was prepared to honor Jesus her rabbi, the one that she, would believe, that she believed would save her. And, and she probably didn't understand how his death could save her, but somehow she knew. In Hebrews chapter 10, for it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. This body of Jesus was prepared for Jesus so that he could be anointed. This body of Jesus was prepared for Jesus so that he could be tortured and hung up on a cross. This body of Jesus was prepared for Jesus, for you and for me, so that he could prepare us. From Psalm 23, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Jesus was prepared so that he could prepare us to anoint our heads with oil, to prepare a place where we can dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Jesus was prepared in his body for death, for suffering, to prepare us to take our sins away, to make us clean, to make us holy. In John chapter 14, in my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Jesus was prepared to come to the earth to suffer and die for you so that he could prepare you, so that he could prepare a place for you. God had a plan for preparation from before the beginning of time, knowing that you and I would fail every day. But he is preparing us by the blood of Jesus to take our sins away so that we can be in God's presence forever. Now, none of us here are probably going to suggest that that our suffering in our life, the trials and things that we go through, are as bad as Jesus. There's nothing that happens in our life that can compare what happened to what happened with Jesus. But sometimes we still may wonder, 
God, why are you putting this, me through this? What are you using this struggle in my life for? And I've got two answers for you for that today in first, uh, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, first of all. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in, our, in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. God allows us to undergo affliction so that we can comfort others who are in similar situations. He uses our suffering to bless others. But he also uses our affliction to prepare us. Not only prepare us to comfort others, but to prepare us for eternity. Again in 2 Corinthians, this time chapter 4. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. God allows affliction in our lives so that we can be prepared for that place that he has prepared for us. To, to experience an eternal weight of glory. The struggles that you go through today are going to be a blessing later in eternity. And when we get to that place, when we get to heaven, we are going to be prepared like a bride for her husband. From Revelation 21. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God. You and I are going to be adorned as a bride for her husband, going out into heaven in God's presence, the dwelling place of God is with man. And when we get there, there are not going to be any more labels. No more Simon the leper, no more fat Dan, no more stinking sinner. Your label is going to be the bride of Christ. Your label is going to be loved and forgiven and chosen. Your label is is going to be child of God. I pray that as, as we prepare for this week ahead of us, this Maundy, Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and Easter celebration, that we call on God to prepare our hearts so that we can be better prepared to celebrate his death and his resurrection and our life for eternity. Comments, questions, thoughts. Okay, then here are your task and question for the week. Your task for the week, thank God for his preparation. Thank him for preparing you, and thank him for preparing a place for you. Thank God for his preparation. And the question for the week, how is God preparing you for eternal glory? How can you see those, those good things and the struggles in your life? How can you see them all? as preparation for eternal glory. Sylvia, will you please wrap us up with prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for being near us in this time. We ask that you would move in our hearts through the message we have just heard. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we might have the courage to be doers of your word and not hearers only. May we be faithful witnesses of the love you have shown us in Christ, in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Thank you, man. Ma'am. And and